The Kale people in Ondo State, Southwest Nigeria, have always been prominent in terms of contributions to socio-economic and political development in Nigeria. Apart from their high level of respect for culture and tradition, they have and are still making their mark in the existence of Nigeria. Highly respected Chief Olu Akinfosile, former Minister of Communications in Nigeria, played significant roles in infrastructural development until this day, the Akinfosile area in the southern senatorial district in Ondo State is named after him in honor of his contributions. Similarly, former governor Olushe Gwagagu was an Ikale man who distinguished himself in both academics, politics, and community development. Our interest this time is about a professional in politics and another illustrious son of the unique people of Ikale in Ondo State. Ife Oluwa Oyedele is a graduate of electrical engineering from the University of Lagos and University of Ife, now Obafemi Awolowo University, Ile Ife. As a man who started with DAFEC, a private engineering consultant outfit, Ife Oluwa Oyedele was saddled with the responsibility of designing and preparing tenders for rural electrification projects. He also carried out similar responsibilities in the Oyo State Ministry of Works and Transport, where he served for two years. Having gone through various stages of career development, President Muhammad Buhari appointed this vibrant professional as the Executive Director, Engineering and Technical Services of Niger Delta Power Audi Company Limited. We're coming from what I would call the state of emergency in the past sector, where we were not generating enough where we were not transmitting enough, and where we were not uh, distributing enough. And this was uh, the reason why the National Integrated Power Project was conceived. And then um, almost immediately after that, the Niger Delta Power Holding Company was um, created. As a successful entrepreneur, fearless, and sound politician, Ife Oluwa Oyedele has continued to justify the confidence reposed in him by the federal government. In the past, what we had going from uh, Abuja to Nasarawa is, a, is, is almost a 95-kilometer, um, 33-kV line. That line is old, is uh, too long such that by the time you have all the losses, what you have in Lafia is almost like having candlelights. So you can imagine what happens to the industries in those areas. And that's one of the food baskets of Nigeria. So this is a major, major, major achievement of, of this government that the 330 KV line that runs from Jaws to Makodi will be stepped down in Lafia. The Niger Delta Power Holding Company was put in place to manage the power projects under the National Integrated Power Project Scheme of the three tiers of government. It is an emergency intervention scheme to tackle the deficit and expand power sector infrastructure in the country. The company's key mandate is to develop 10 power plants with a designed ISO capacity of over 5,000 megawatts, 102 transmission lines and substation projects, as well as over 291 distribution injection substations and gas infrastructure with over 22,000 self-protected transformers, among other critical projects. I must say, with all due sense of uh, modesty, that this organization has fulfilled that purpose to the admiration of all, even though a lot of people don't understand what we're doing. Um, and because we are not um, like most other organizations that have direct interface with the Citizens. With the administrative and professional dexterity of engineer Ife Oluwa Oyedele and other competent hands, the company has completed over 4,000 megawatts. These projects are scattered across Nigeria, including Okitipupa in the southern senatorial district of Ondo State. 
All these recognitions attracted the Nigeria Society of Engineers, which approved the Fellow of the Society, Engineer Oyedele, to deliver a specialized lecture tagged Distinguished Electrical and Electronic Engineers Annual Lecture. The lecture held in Abuja attracted personalities from all walks of life. When the 2021 Distinguished Electrical and Electronics Engineer Annual Lecture deal, making him the 15th Distinguished electrical engineer in Nigeria since 2000. The lecture is titled Electrifying Nigeria is Sanakwa known to building a great industrial and safe nation. It was a forum where ingenuity and intellectual sagacity of engineer Oyedele as a professional contributor to the socio-economic and political development of the country was displayed. The Ondo State-born engineer highlighted the various problems confronting power sector in the country, urging the federal government to restructure and strengthen the regulatory agencies and put round pegs in round holes. The introduction of LTV in Nigeria was first broached in the year 1891 when Governor Denton uh, wrote to the Secretary of State for the Colonies to request for funds for street lighting. He justified the cost on social group. And then, I, I'm, I'm not sure anything happened then. In 1893, the succeeding governor, Governor Carter, uh, following the representation by the Legal Chamber of Commerce, then, unless government is ready to bite the bullet and accept the painful truth, and be ready to revisit the exercise to take appropriate bold remedial actions, the sector will sink further. I'm sure that in, while I was relating the history, you have seen this circle over and over again. Already this cycle of expensive government bailouts has started. These are the thoughts I have expressed privately since 2016. Unfortunately, those who have invested interest will hear none of it. I see people on television propounding all kinds of theory every time and I, I, I'm amazed. Do they really love this country? Why are they not meeting? Why are we not uh, um, harmonizing our efforts? Government is to present a coherent, unified face with consistent policy. A master plan of not less than 25 years, perhaps broken into five-year plans, which should not be jeopardized by changes of government, just like other successful countries like Singapore, like India, like Rwanda. As of today, Nigeria has a generation capacity of 12.1 gigawatts, while actual operations are about 4 to 5 megawatt, gigawatts. The corresponding transmission and distribution capacity is about 5 to 6 uh, MBA. If you, have, if, you have, if you have a generation capacity of 1 megawatt, your transmission capacity should be about between 2 and 2.5 megawatts, and your distribution should be about 4 megawatts. So, for a generation capacity of between 12 and 15 megawatts, you should have a transmission capacity of between 24 and 13,000 megawatts, and between 48 and 50,000 megawatts. For what do we have today? Oyedele also gave an 11-point recommendation to government to put an end to power problems in the country. Minister of Works and Housing Babatunde Fashola, who was special guest of honor, said government alone could not solve the problem being faced in the power sector. He therefore called on the private sector to keep playing critical roles. Some of the experiences that we want to forget that we have had with our public utility delivery from ECA to NEPA to PHCA. Those experiences must not be final. It is a possibility of tomorrow that must shape us to be positive, to be optimistic. So I urge us to remain positive. I urge us to think positively. And I urge us to act positively about this issue. Is there really any debate that we are the largest economy in Africa? Is there a debate about that? But one of the things I have asked myself is that if we are the largest economy in Africa, clearly it must be because of our productive capacity and our earning capacity. Is this then logically possible? That the biggest economy in Africa can have relatively smaller electricity. 
Ondo State Governor Arakoni Oluwaruti Miyakere Dolu, represented by his deputy Loki Aedatiwa, appreciated the zeal of the guest lecturer by extraying the challenges and proffering solutions. Energy, electricity everywhere to increase our productivity, our industrialization, so that we can get more tax. Doesn't mean it will happen just like that. And you made mention of it in one of your slides. And for the fact that we don't even like the darkness we are seeing everywhere, the shortcoming doesn't mean it will go away just like that. It's one of the reasons we are here today to explain the journey so far, which engineer really has taken us through what has been, what is, and what we want to see. So we need lectures like this, but it shouldn't end up at just lecture, but we must put action to all of it. Therefore, I want to thank the organizers of this event. We are proud to have you. In fact, one of the scholars of now, I could see the energy with which you were delivering and marshalling your point. Yeah, it's been an inspiring moment, you know, listening to a very distinguished lecturer, you know, a distinguished son of Ondo State, whom we are all proud, uh, digesting the problem in the you know, electricity sector in this country. You know, the issue of power has been a, a problem in this country. I met uh, General Edele in the course of my job at TCN. Of course, Transmission Company of Nigeria is a power sector operator, operator as well. He's a very professional man. He's a very thorough man. And the lecture, of course, like it was said there, that lecture should be a reference point to the power, for the power sector. If we follow all these things that we here and especially this lecture, we should be able to get things moving from now on. There is no point begging the question. Say it as you, as you see it and then changes can come. What he did here today should make every Undo State person proud. I am proud to be an Undo State indigenous. I am proud to be associated with him. Uh, I struggled you know, to come here today because I came all the way from Lagos, and as soon as I came, I just jumped into my car again and started coming here. And I'm happy that I did, because unless you are there, you won't know how good the delicacy that was delivered. It makes us proud, it makes us believe that we, ha we, we have hope in this country, that people can think and say it the way they, 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 they know it. I, I was particularly uh, eager to be here because I was in a workshop in the U.S. about four years ago and when they were showing the names of countries that are developed, it is those countries that consume electricity more than any other country in the world that had the highest GDP. Highlight of the event was the confirmation of fellow of Nigeria Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers on the lecturer. Distinguished Electrical Engineer Award is the highest commendation given in recognition of technical excellence in the field of electrical engineering practice as well as resource management. The objective of this recognition is to honor outstanding performance in the advancement of electrical engineering practice in Nigeria. The Institute took pride in the excellent track record of achievement of engineer and the field of electrical engineering practice as well as resource management. And by this, we were inspired to honor him accordingly.
Engineer, a fellow Oye Dele, fellow Nigerian Society of Engineers, fellow Nigerian Institute of uh, uh, Electrical Electronics Engineer, fellow Nigerian Institute of Power Engineers, uh, is a guru when I talk of engineering, mostly power engineering. I've known Nigerian Holiday for years and it has been good. It's a well-grounded person, as I've said earlier on, in terms of engineering in the country. Within the state, it has been contributing its own little quota to development of uh, electrical infrastructure within the state. Let's say, I'm talking of Ondo State now, in terms of uh, infrastructure development of electrical uh, power infrastructure within the state, it has been contributing a lot to, the, to that setup. Next generation of engineers coming up can learn a lot from them. You just have to be cool-headed, listen to the advice of the other, watch the way they are doing, don't think of uh, Monday issues. That, ah, this man has been there today, I want to be there today. No, let's follow the step gradually. It's a, le we learn, it's a learning process. Now for him attaining that position, now it's, I've been there for years. Gradually, gradually, for him attaining that position, at least we should give kudos to him. And the younger one coming to learn how to imbibe him, be humane, be humble, in any sector, you any situation you find yourself. That's why you can learn from the elders. But so do we achieve what we want. What is lacking in Nigeria is the absence of a master plan. And this is a problem with all of the sectors of Nigeria. When we have a master plan, maybe a 30-year master plan with five-year rolling plans, and we follow, we are disciplined enough to follow this through. Now, what will happen is that every five years, we look at the plan and we say, where are we? Where are we supposed to be? What have we left undone? What have we done that we are not supposed to do? And then we review the, the, the plan and then we move on to the next stage. That is the ideal situation. Uh, there was a company called Tractor Bell in the 60s that was employed, that was engaged by is a consultancy firm to draw up a master plan for Nigeria. Indeed, Nigeria had master plans in all of the sectors uh, of Nigeria in roads, in this. But over the time when the governments came in, they abandoned these master plans and they went on to do things like, uh, as in a uh, uh, fire brigade approach to doing things. And that's what disrupted the, 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 the plans. Now, if we had had a master plan and we have followed this master plan, you know, we will have been able to catch up with the uh, demand and maybe surpass it as well. What is happening in most of the other countries today is that they have surpassed the, the, the demand and they have excess that they can always bring on board through a properly planned uh, uh, looping system that makes room for, for um, uh, a... a, a a national grid and also mini grids or state grids and mini grids all over the country. So that's what is lacking in Nigeria today. Apart from being a successful engineer, Oyedele's interest in contributing to the socio-economic situation in Nigeria made him become a political giant. He became member board of trustee of APC and had also served as member board of trustee of the defunct Congress for Progressive Change, the party president Mamadou Buhari formed ahead of the 2011 general elections. And in 2020, he took a shot at the governorship seat in Ondo State, but later collapsed his structure in support of Arakun Uluwaru Timiakere Dolu, who eventually won the election.